Well, here's the uh, video that I promised, and uh, sorry it's been so long, but I've just had some issues, and uh, hopefully we can get get this out, and you get to see how this is done, and and um, so uh, we'll get started. First thing you want to do is um, wear protective gloves. Um, Usually gloves that are chemical resistant are the best because when you go to wash up your equipment, you use acetone. Acetone, if you don't know what that is, it's, it's a solvent that uh, breaks down the, the, the epoxy resin. Um, that's why I'm using disposable cups. That way I can just throw it away. Uh, if, because if I was to pour acetone in, I'd eat the bottom right out. So, and acetone's not good on your, your hands and neither is that stuff. That stuff is, is not good. Um, safety precautions, or like I said, wear the rubber gloves. Um, safety glasses. Um, also, uh, use it in a well ventilated area. Don't use it in a closed room. The epoxy resin puts off a, Older, if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, uh, you may want to get a um, breathing apparatus to filter that out. So, uh, them are some safety precautions. As you see, I I have my measuring cup, and uh, these are to use in my uh, lettering because it's actually kind of hard to pour into this. So you want to. Uh, use these to squirt it in there. So I have them ready and um, I have my colors. We're all ready to go. Um, thank you, Danielle, for the um, the definition or the explanation of the one color. I didn't know what it was. It's actually a stone, she says. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, so we'll get started. Um, I use a scale because there is a density difference between the two. One is thicker than the other, which, which is heavier. So I use a scale. We want to end up with two ounces because we're not, not going to need a whole bunch. So we're going to use approximately one ounce of um, hardener and one ounce epoxy. So I'll give us approximately two ounces. Uh, this is a self-zeroing scale, so when I put the cup on it, turn it on, it says hello, and we come up with zero. So, um, I used my epoxy, I put it in first because it's, it's, it's a little thinner, so the density is not as heavy. And so we're going to look at about getting one ounce. So we want to get, looks like one ounce is going to be right around 2,000 ounce, or grams. Yeah. Now we've got 2,050. Uh, one of the things you need is paper towels. Clean up your mask is... This stuff gets everywhere. It's it's hard. It's it's a mess to clean up. I know. I've spilt it. So we'll set that over there out of the way. Now we'll get our harder. So it looks like we're gonna want uh, four thousand one hundred ounces. I should say. Sorry, I said grams before, but it's ounces. It's amazing how we want. Fluid, this is fluid ounces, but we want weight ounces. So we're looking for 4,100 ounces, 
weight ounces. Can't get any closer than that, 4,100 weight ounces. So we'll wipe our lid off, cut our threads, put the, be sure to put the lid back on. So we'll take that off there, just turn off our scale, set it out of the way. Now we come to the stirring part. Tongue depressor. And we want to stir this about oh, five minutes or so. It kind of turns cloudy. You can tell the difference between the, the uh, thinner and the thicker and it'll, it'll come out a little thinner as you stir it, it'll thin up. It'll it'll look, it'll be like water. You don't want to stir it real fast because that creates bubbles. Bubbles are not good. Uh, the less bubbles that you have, the better out, the clearer your product will get. Uh, bubbles will rise to the top after you pour it, and if you don't get them out, then um, they'll pop and leave a hole. If you're you're using color, it's not so bad. Like when I pour my crosses and put it in the base, I get um, little bubbles around the base, but it's, that's expected. It's hard to get all the bubbles out of the base. But uh, here we're making letters, uh, less bubbles, less issues we have. So uh, we'll want to stir this about five minutes or so like I said you want to make sure to get up get around the edges because it will stick to the side and be sure to scrape the bottom uh, I should have said before this to make sure I cleaned all this before uh, but I use canned air and obviously when you spray this stuff the canned air spray it away from your face uh, you don't want anything flying back into your eyes or mouth or whatever uh, if you don't have safety glasses on. Which should be using safety glasses to begin with. Or safety goggles. So while we're stirring, we'll just... Uh, so many of like my stories I tell. And one time I was delivering over in Joplin, Illinois. And... Uh, it was kind of like the weather around here it's been lately. Um, Tuesday it was 80 degrees and and um, then Wednesday it, the bottom dropped out Wednesday or Tuesday night and we had snow, sleet. We had four seasons in one 24 hours. But anyway, I was over in Joplin and, and I had two loads of deliver over in Joplin from Wichita, Kansas. And... Um, so I pulled both loads over the, in during the day because it was really nice and about 60 degrees. Well, that night, the rain moved in and then it turned to freezing rain and then it snowed on top of it. And uh, the parking lot that I was in, the road, the road leading to that to turn off, there's ditches on both sides. And then across, across the road was a dealership for a, a truck dealership. And, um, so that morning I got up, wind's blowing, it's about 10 degrees with the, without the wind chill. And, uh, when I went to turn off, turn out of the parking lot, 
so I wouldn't drop my trailer off into the ditch. I got too close to the other side of the the road and I slid off into the ditch on that side with my cab, front left front wheel. Well, being that it was so nice the weeks before, nothing was frozen. So when I fell in the ditch, it sunk because it's ice and snow on top, but underneath it was not frozen. So I can move back and forth, but I couldn't get I couldn't get over the hump from the driveway from the truck dealership across from the road. So I got out and threw some salt underneath my wheels. Now I mentioned the tra the trailer I had had probably around 52,000 pounds of flour on it. Crooked at a 45 degree angle that takes the lift off the right rear. So that means they would spin because that's the way the weight works on, on the truck. So I threw salt underneath all my tire, my drive tires, and I, I wasn't getting anywhere. I was just going back and forth. And, and finally, I just closed my eyes and I said, you know, Lord, I said in the Bible, it says, asking you shall receive. And, and you don't get because you don't ask. Well, I said, I'm asking. I need to get out of this hole. Because if I get a wrecker over here to pull me out of this little hole, it's going to affect my safety record. So I put it in reverse and I backed right out of the hole, believe it or not. And the thing about it was my front axle is literally dragging the ground. So there should have been no possible way. I should have got out of that hole, but I did. My my left front wheel was packed full of mud, but um, I got out of the hole and didn't have to have a wrecker come out and pull me out. So um, miracles do happen. Any way you look at it, for me, it was a miracle because I would have probably had to been there hours. I'd have been late for my appointment it would have caused me all kinds of problems. So, uh, it worked. Now, we've been stirring this for about five minutes or so. Now I'm going to... I'm going to pour it in my cups. And then we'll add our colors. After I get some more sticks. Because you... You want to use individual sticks for each color that you are going to use. One few more, making sure I got everything stirred up here. So, I'll throw that in that. That's my little stick deposit cup. Now, as you see, I do have a lot of little micro bubbles in here. So we'll pour. Yep, yep, see something flew out of that. So glad I did that. So we're going to pour a little bit in this. Pour a little bit into that. Pour a little bit into that. Now, the work time you have for this before it starts to harden is 30 to 40 minutes. So I have 30 to 40 minutes before this stuff will start reacting and um, setting up. So I got plenty of time. So there we got most of that out. 
acetone. Yeah, I know. Big enough can, right? Well, I, quart cans, I got tired of doing a lot of it. And when you do a lot of it, them little quart cans don't go far. So we'll pour a little bit of acetone into that. So it uh, doesn't set up. And I have a bunch of little coffee stirs. Got them off Amazon for a little or nothing. Um, I like to do this right after I pour it because it's eas so much easier. A lot of, I've watched a lot of videos and guys say, oh, wait till it sets up. It's so much. No, it's not. Because all that stuff, that little, it turns to plastic. And then once it turns to plastic, you've got to get it all out. before you can do your next project or else you're going to have little bits of plastic in it. So I like to do it right after I make something or I do a pour. That way it's clean. I don't have to worry about it. I have a garbage can here close by. Get your towel. You can just stick it in there like that. This way it gets cleaned up. Get it wiped out real good. Voila, it's cleaned up. Now you don't have to worry about. And then now, see what it does, see? Look at that, look what that acetone did to my gloves. So, now I'm getting new gloves. Well, considering where I bought these from, I figured they wouldn't last very long. I got some from Sam's here a while back, and they work really well. They didn't uh, deteriorate, but I gave these, give little or nothing for these. I'm not gonna say where I got them from, but I'm not impressed. But anyway, so we have four sticks, and this, Just kind of stir it up. Oh, that pretty blue. That's a pretty blue. I really like that blue. This is coral. And here's Ruby. 
Okay, Ruby. Okay, now we have everything set up there. We're gonna move over here to our uh, heat pad. I have a heat pad that helps increase the, draw, the set time. So we'll move over here. So we got our little heat pad turned on. See, this is the heat pad. And what that does is it, instead of taking three, four hours, because we're not gonna make them real thick, um, to dry, it'll, it'll just take half the time to get it done. I need, I wanna get me a leveling table too. It helps when you're making bigger projects or like you're making flat projects um, to have your stuff level. That way, like these LED circles I want to make. So, I got my little notepad here. It tells me what, what letters I need to make. So we'll take one of our little apparatuses here. I've done this with syringes. Um, just a syringe part and it works a lot faster obviously because you just pull it up and then you you squirt it on in there Okay, this is our O, one, eight, three of these, so. So we'll let that one suck back up in there. Let's 
So we'll get Ruby out here. As you can see, this is not, this can be time consuming. Waiting for it to pull up in there. Uh, while we were waiting, I started the other two so we can get that done. So uh, we'll go with the W. This also helps measure out how much you put in there. Because um, I don't want to make them real thick to put into a flat uh, circle. They'll light up better if they're more with the circle, you know, the dimension of the circle than if you make them real thick. Wish I had a syringe, it would have been way quicker. We'll go with the D next. We're going to alternate here because that way And keep this going that way I won't have to edit too much of the video out with nothing being said However you want to do it to your, you know, for yourself. Not that one.
Man vill ha ögat in i det. Well now, um, it's a few hours later, uh, obviously it's dark, and um, the um, letters are hard. Now, as you can see, they've turned out rather nicely, and uh, getting them taken out, so here we are. There's our H, turned out real nice, nice and thin. It's about, uh, between about uh, eighth inch thick or so. And then here's our F. Here's our E. Our D, the P, sorry if I hold that up too high, here's our O with our pretty color of stone. And then here's the turquoise N. And no bubbles. The bubbles, that's a good thing, no bubbles. Bubbles makes it bad. And there's our W. It's still a little soft yet, but they'll harden up. Thing is, you can take them out. Lay them on flat surface and they'll harden up. Are you? Oh, the S is being stubborn. There we go. There's our S. And here's the T. Now, obviously, that's just the beginning. I have to finish making the letters. And uh, uh, finish making the letters and the disc. 
and uh, we'll see if we can go through that process also. Um, sorry about this. So there we go. Um, so then we'll make the disc and uh, we'll go through all that. That'll be some separate parts. Um, but other than that, that's about all it is.